Good morning um, and good afternoon to our counterparts in Eastern Africa. Thank you for taking the time to join us today um, as we present the last session of our 2022-2023 um, grant outcome webinars. Um, before we get started, I just want to share a brief reminder um, and thanks to the MHCH Foundation for their contributions to this generous grant. As always, we appreciate um, the opportunities for them to advance the global learning opportunities for um, partnered institutions around the world. Um, the grant application process will open on March 1st. Um, on February 21st, we are having a pre-application seminar that we recommend anyone who is interested in participating this year to join. Just a brief housekeeping message that we will be um, holding all questions and answers to the end. If you do have something that you would like to share, please feel free to use the chat or Q&A feature in advance. Um, but know that we're going to hold on to them until the end to allow the presentation to flow. And now I would like to introduce you to, oh, I'm sorry, we're just getting a little bit of feedback here. Okay. Um, thank you. Sorry about that. Um, to our presenters today. So joining us from the University of South Dakota, we have um, Lisa Feller who is the Director of Regulatory Affairs and an Associate Professor at the University of South Dakota Department of Nursing. Lisa has had over 36 years of healthcare experience and 25 years of experience in nursing education. Her areas of expertise in include adult health, rural health, leadership, and quality improvement. She was a member of the Quality and Safety Education for Nurses pilot pro project and has provided consultation to nursing programs regarding the integration of QSEN competencies and curricula. In, addi in addition, Lisa has worked closely with the community and practice partners to implement workforce development models in rural settings. Joining Lisa is Helen Heggie, Helene Heggie, my apologies. She is a, practice, a practicing nursing for over 35 years and has practiced in many different clinical areas, including as primary RN in a rural clinic for 10 years. While working in the rural health clinic, Ms. Heggie obtained her master's of science in nursing education. She has been a nurse educator at the University of South Dakota for the past 10 years. Also from the University of South Dakota, we have Dr. Ann Pithen, who has been in the nursing profession for over 36 years. She is currently the chair of the University of South Dakota Department of Nursing. She has a strong background in both nursing practice and nursing education. Dr. Pithen host holds a certification. Sorry. Dr. Pithen holds a certification as a nurse educator, medical surgical nursing, executive nursing practice, and nurse executive. Dr. Pithen holds a doctorate degree in nursing specializing in organizational leadership, quality improvement, and evidence-based practice. She has extensive clinical experience and has held numerous positions in leadership in nursing practice. She is the vice president of the South Dakota Nursing Education Deans and Directors. Along with um, our faculty from the University of South Dakota, today we are joined by two individuals from the Kosho Institute of Health and Allied Sciences. Um, I'd like to introduce you to Godri and Lute. He has a BS in nursing and MS in mental health nursing and is a deputy principal academic research and consultancy of the Kabosho Institute of Health and Allied Sciences in Kilimanjaro, Tanzania. The work that he performs focuses on coordinating, reviewing, reporting, and evaluating activities and research projects in academia. With extensive experience in nursing and the medical field, Godry author operates in a dual capacity serving as a clinician and consul of mental health services and engaging in managerial activities. Along with Katerine, we have Glory um, Camario, a graduate from the Catholic University of Health and Allied Sciences, who currently works as a nurse tutor at the Kobosho Institute of Health and Allied Sciences. In her spare time, she enjoys reading and spending time with her family. And now I'd like to turn this presentation over to um, our presenters. Thank you. Thank you very much, Stacy. Um, it's our pleasure and privilege to 
share our work on this project uh, today with all of you. Our project was titled The Promotion of Global Health Competencies Through Assessment of Vulnerable Populations, a virtual exchange project. And so we, we hope that you find uh, this interesting today. It was certainly a, a very wonderful experience for all of us. Next slide, Stacy. We do want to begin today with a very sincere thank you to the Matson Halverson Christensen Hamilton Foundation and also to the Global R Rural Nursing Exchange Network for their support of this project. Um, this was, again, a very, very meaningful experience for all of us as faculty as well as our students. And we are very grateful for the opportunity to have this experience and hope that all of you will consider applying uh, for a grant in the future as well. Before we get uh, too far into it, as I, I mentioned, it was extremely meaningful for all of us. And we thought we'll just set the stage for that by sharing a few of um, some of the reflections that we heard from students as they completed this experience. Um, things that they learned included that healthcare is focused on the patient no matter what, even if how we do that is different um, from place to place, we all have a, a shared common commitment to caring for patients. Another thing is that um, just valuing the person and their culture can go so far, meaning just it can really make such a difference in the care of patients. And so being willing to understand that is very important. And then also that resource allocation is, is very important and, and does have a significant impact on um, how we can <laughs> deliver care. So hopefully you'll just set the stage there with um, how uh, our students felt about this experience. So now I'm gonna turn it over to our colleagues from Tanzania and I'll let uh, Godrian take it from here. Okay, uh, thank you, Elisa, for the wonderful introduction. So uh, as we know that this is the partnership between uh, the two colleges or universities, which includes the uh, Kibosho Institute of Health and Allied Sciences, which is uh, located in Moshi, Tanzania, is the Africa. But also uh, we have uh, University of South Dakota from Department of Nursing which is located in Vermilion, uh, South Dakota. Next, please. Uh, so these are some of the pictures that we are having from the two parts, uh, from Lolo, Tanzania, and also Lolo, South Dakota. So uh, in these uh, environments is where uh, 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 the nursing uh, assessment uh, was conducted basically. <clears throat> so uh, with Kibosho, uh, we are two here, uh, that is Godrian, and also my colleague, Gary Mario, but also in, uh, in uh, South Dakota University, we are having Lisa, uh, Helen, and Annie. Next. <clears throat> so when we were um, uh, launching our project, actually, we uh, we had some few areas we wanted to uh, to address, and the first area was the uh, to to address about what we need for competencies in global healthcare. That was the first area, but also. We intended to identify care for vulnerable groups uh, popula uh, or populations that are located in uh, in both areas, that's South Dakota and Tanzania in particular, but also um, uh, to see how innovative can be uh, uh, to, to come up with you know, innovative ideas on how we can uh, uh, propel our project and the collaboration between these two nursing schools. Uh, and lastly, it was uh, about uh, the to put technology uh, into use uh, and uh, to see how it can facilitate uh, learning and the collaboration uh, between uh, international 
uh, institutes. Next, please. <clears throat> and we had the goals or uh, objectives that we wanted to achieve when we were having this uh, we have project. So I will start with the goal number one. I think my colleague will continue with the uh, goal number two. So the first goal was to promote international cooperative and uh, awareness uh, and create awareness of global health competences through the use of technology. That was the uh, the main goal. But in order to achieve this goal, uh, actually, uh, we utilize GRNEN community platform uh, so that we facilitate communication and the collaboration between uh, the two colleges. But also, uh, we established a mutual, respective, and a collaborative relationship by using the technology. Uh, again, <clears throat> uh, we identified the need for development uh, of the global competencies. Uh, and uh, when we say the global need for uh, global competencies, we are talking about how to collaborate or to do partnership and how we can achieve communication. But also, uh, we analyze the impact of culture on the delivery uh, of healthcare in uh, rural Moshe, Tanzania, and South Dakota as well. But lastly, we discuss uh, we discuss the impact of technology on communication collaboration during the global uh, collaboration. So uh, these was the uh, key areas, specific areas that we addressed in order to achieve goal number one. So uh, let me hand over to my colleague to continue with the goal number two. Thank you. Uh, can we go to the next slide? Okay, thank you. So we, uh, we had two goals and the second goal was uh, to address health needs of Palan Arab population in rural Tanzania and South Dakota. So this was the second goal in which uh, in this goal we describe the roles of healthcare providers um, and also the roles of other support systems in the delivery of healthcare in both countries in which uh, we both saw different roles in, uh, in each country. And also we uh, identified and assessed different populations, uh, vulnerable populations in, uh, in different areas uh, in which we, uh, in Tanzania, we observed elders and children, also pregnant women, and the children were mostly the children under five, and the elders uh, were above 60 years, so is where, where we uh, grouped them in as a vulnerable population. And in another, uh, another is to identify barriers to the delivery of healthcare in rural areas of Tanzania and South Dakota. In, uh, in this, we discussed different barriers in which we observed uh, points of structures and we also observed uh, lack of uh, equipment, uh, mostly in the rural areas in which uh, in one way or the other, there were barriers in to provide, uh, they were hindering the provision of services to, uh, to, the, to the population. And we also compared and contrast priorities affecting vulnerable population in rural Tanzania and South Dakota. In rural Tanzania, we observed different priorities like uh, the elders were given priority in health services and also the under fives the priority when receiving health services. Uh, so in which we observed that uh, in, in South Dakota, uh, I mean, in rural Tanzania, that uh, were prioritized the the elders and the under fives. Also, lastly, we uh, we develop uh, develop a plan of care to address health needs of vulnerable population, uh, including nursing care, interventions, and teachings. Uh, according to uh, this goal, we uh, developed plan and mostly were teachings because of the resources and uh, other things contributed to that. So these were uh, these were goals of and uh, objectives in this project. Thank you. Maybe just to uh, to add upon that, uh, I think we have more details in the video that was produced by our colleagues. I think it can uh, explain much more uh, in these two goals that we have uh, shown here. Maybe if we have the next slide. 
yeah okay i think that's uh that's that's all that we uh we can uh present back to our colleagues please hello can you hear from yes thank you yeah. thank you right. very much Godrian. so and uh, now we'll talk a little bit about the grant funding and how um, the funds were dispersed and how they were used. And so for um, Kabosho um, Institute of Health and Allied Sciences, the uh, student transportation, accommodations, supervisor reimbursement and equipment. And then um, as Godry and just shared, we also, we have created a project highlight of and a video that we'll be watching here in a little bit that we use the funds to um, to just combine and show what our experiences and we're in both communities. And then also just materials and supplies needed to implement um, the students going out into the communities. So I'm so appreciative of this funding to help to facilitate um, the projects in both Kabosho and also in South Dakota. And so before the students went out into their community settings, uh, we had a pre-immersion student meeting where um, the Kabosho students and the South Dakota students met and um, our, the faculty, we were all there together as a team. And um, we just really started out by developing relationships. We introduced um, ourselves and where we live and what kind of communities we live in and about what healthcare looks like in our communities. And um, so these were the topics of our discussions. Um, and you'll, you'll hear um, some of the feedback from these discussions about um, the differences and the similarities, not only in the healthcare setting, but also in as nurses and nursing education and how the differences um, between the two and then the similarities. Um, we knew when we had this pre-immersion meeting, we knew that our um, mission was going to be the same, that we were all going to be going out into a rural community and uh, focusing on vulnerable populations in rural communities. So for, um, for our students here in South Dakota, Sometimes um, they come from a larger city. And so just exposing them to rural and to rural healthcare is, is a new piece in itself. But there was an extra addition onto this project that we identified extra vulnerable populations in the rural communities um, to focus on that. We know they're vulnerable just because they're rural, but also we identified even more vulnerable um, communities, um, and, and that was the same occurred with Kabosho as well. Uh, next slide. And so all students from both schools participated in this introductory relationship building session, and um, that was started in March. Um, kind of our semester started um, in January. Um, uh, Kabosho, you're, you're started a little bit later, so I guess if we're talking about maybe some challenges that we had was, was the timing and getting the timing for everything to um, synchronize with both of us so that we could go through the same steps. But our, our nursing programs were on a little bit different schedule. So that was one of the challenges, but um, um, gosh, Godreen was just so accommodating and, and it worked really well that we, we, we were able to get the projects in and we had all of our gatherings together before the end of our semesters. Um, so um, the first thing when the students um, were assigned to go to a um, population and they started out the experience by doing a windshield survey on the community. And just so of course um, we had guidelines for them to assess their community. Does they, do they have a clinic? Are there grocery stores? Is there a church? Are there banks? Are there, and just to do that, just a, a, a very thorough assessment just by driving through the town, are there parks? Um, how many schools are there? Or is there a school in the community? Um, so just so that the student could get acquainted and knowing what this rural um, setting looked like. And then based upon these assessment findings, each group identified a priority health need that was needed in those settings. 
So um, for our um, students in South Dakota, we um, identified three um, different places um, for the students to go. Um, one was a, a nursing home in Avera, a nursing home in Wakanda, South Dakota. And um, then they also went to CESDAC, which is a disability facility in Vermilion, South Dakota. And then they went to a school in uh, Why Not, Nebraska. And um, so they um, did their assessment. Um, and then also um, the Kabosho students went out into their communities as well and did an assessment of their population and their needs of um, their populations across the lifespan. And you'll, you'll hear in the, the video the different um, populations um, that uh, they were um, able to approach in this rural setting. And then we also formulated a rubric for a podcast. And we identified that this was an electronic form that um, we had support here in America. And then Godrian had support there um, at Kabosho because um, we, we know that um, Wi-Fi access is challenging in rural settings um, here in South Dakota and also there. We, we know that that is common, even though it is uh, more of a problem um, there than it is for us here in America. Um, but we identified that we could do a podcast and that um, both teams would be able to do that. And so the podcasts are um, posted on the uh, GRNEN uh, website as well. And you're welcome to go in and look at those podcasts that the students did. So we, um, Godreen and I created the template together and so we agreed upon what we wanted to have in those um, podcasts. And so then they uh, posted those onto the GRNE and uh, platform. And then they gave, the students gave each other and, and we as well um, gave feedback and support. And and the podcasts, were, they just did an awesome, awesome job. And it was um, those podcasts where the students um, really um, got to know each other even better and the cultures, um, the difference in cultures, but yet some of the similarities. So um, that was a, a very valuable project. And um, so then um, the students, as I shared, were in the clinical immersion and they went to these sites um, and um, there was um, an assessment tool um, was used by um, both cohorts in um, assessing um, their inter what their intervention was for the population that they did. And so, um, so they're not just going into the community, they're also doing something. So for um, the nursing home, they looked at their falls because they have a lot of fall problems, falls, and um, they, they could really identify that the falls had increased with the temporary CNA staffing that had occurred. So they created some tools to use for the temp staffing um, to help with them to uh, provide a higher quality of care. They created a handbook with each client and their needs. So before they went into, go into the room, they were able to understand what that patient needs are um, since they're unfamiliar um, at traveling CNA. Um, at the disability services, they, they focused on nutrition and how to improve the diet um, and focused on because they identified that the clients there were drinking a lot of sodas. And so trying to find a more, um, and there's a, some obesity problems. And so trying to um, counteract that. And then at the school, um, they identified that the isolation um, was a problem. And so um, they're for students and so um, they worked on some um, and, and bullying and social um, interventions um, for uh, the students at the school. And so then um, in the evaluation of these outcomes, um, and then also with Godrian and his community, they evaluated their outcomes as well. And then they shared, the students shared um, what their uh, health needs and their interventions and how it improved the health of their communities. Uh, next slide, please. And so as I shared, we did a community assessment and it was that windshield survey. And so we just have a couple of our um, facilities and we can kind of see the difference. And it was these photos and the video that we'll be watching 
And it really is impactful how we are so far away, but we do have many similarities as well. And so the top picture is a picture of a, a clinic in um, Kabosho. And then the bottom picture is the uh, picture of the uh, nursing home in South Dakota. Um, and here is, is just some more beautiful pictures of Moshi, uh, Tanzania, um, that Godrian shared with us. Um, it's just our, our, I think the students also going out into the communities, um, not only identify the communities, but also the uniqueness of the rural settings and the beauty of these rural settings. Um, and as I shared, um, our podcast guide was created. And um, we also, as I said, posted these podcasts on the GRNEN platform. And I invite all of the attendees here today to go to the GRNEN platform and to watch those podcasts. Um, and you can hear the students um, from both Kabosho and South Dakota, and you can just hear um, their passion uh, for the care of the populations in those communities. Um, at the end, then, in May, um, we had our final debriefing, and uh, all students participated in this final debriefing um, with our faculty and with our Zoom session. Um, and so just as this uh, uh, presentation today, it seemed like 7 a.m. Uh, for Central Standard Time for us it works well, and for Gadrian and for Kobosho, it's about it's late in the afternoon for them. So this was the time that worked the best for both of us. So this is the time that we would use um, to do these um, sessions. And so um, in our final session and highlights of that will be heard on the video um, that we'll be watching as well. Um, and, and just identifying the needs of these vulnerable populations that are in a rural setting and um, the impact of culture um, and um, really learning about a different culture than our own helps us to identify how we can care for different cultures in our own communities. And the students, as you saw from the feedback from students on that first slide, that they truly recognize that and then the importance of um, being culturally competent and aware of cultural differences and to provide culturally sensitive care and the importance of communication. And so in our um, post-clinical joint student meeting, these are um, some of the pieces um, that we used for um, evaluation. Um, and so listening to those podcasts, we identified how culturally culture impacts um, the delivery of care and the students recognize how it increases the quality of care. And then also from meeting with each other on the Zoom and listening to the podcast, um, we asked them about what similarities and differences uh, in the priority healthcare needs of the populations. Um, and then uh, just talking about their experiences and working with their colleagues in each country. And how, what did you learn about communication and collaboration? And how did you do those things? Um, and we, we know that is so important for quality care to occur. And then also specifically when we're working with different cultures. And then what are your thoughts about the importance of developing these skills and communicating with nurses in other parts of the world? So even though our, our students in both Kabosho and uh, South Dakota, we were both focusing on our, our populations and working to do our interventions and to improve the healthcare there, it was so nice to come together for these meetings to share how we're doing it and, and what was the same and what was different and, and learning from each other. And um, I think one of the most impactful things and uh, takeaways, which is the final piece for me when listening to the pieces, and I know the students here shared it with me too, was that in Kogosho, how they value the elderly, how the elderly is, uh, you know, priority care is given to the elderly and how important the elderly are. 
And so that was really a, a very um, a very moving piece that came um, from this that the students had for a takeaway as well. And so these are pictures of our students um, at the Kabosho School of Nursing and um, students that were in the clinical setting. These are students that were at the school um, and talking about feelings and uh, helping uh, students with their social presence and their feelings and bullying and having positive thoughts about themselves. So, oh, go ahead. Um, I think I think this is, is my piece uh, here. So um, I just wanted to share this uh, is our, our video that was created. And uh, we're just so excited to share this with you guys. And I'd just like to talk about the video for just a few things for you to watch for in this video. So as uh, Gadrian and Glory had so... Uh, clarified our goals with such, uh, did such a great job with that. I would just like you to watch how our goals were met here. And so our two goals as we watch our video was to promote international learning and awareness of global health competencies through technology. So um, I, I think you'll see what a great job we were able to connect across the world. Uh, the second goal was to address health needs of vulnerable populations in both Tanzania and uh, in South Dakota. And as you watch this video, we'll, we'll, talk, we'll see that initial meeting of kind of that relationship building that we had. We'll also talk about challenges and opportunities that we have in, in South Dakota and also in Tanzania. And then as we, uh, as Helene had talked about those questions that the students addressed, you'll really see their perspective come through on this video. And, um, we just really hope you enjoy this video. the high school levels, some may get to the colleges and others may get to the university. Those who finish the university graduating as nursing officers and those who are finishing at the colleges, uh, like uh, institutes, they are uh, finishing as assistants, nurse officers. But they're all registered nurses, but at different levels. One with bachelor degree and the other one with just diploma. The pregnant women, also children and elderly people. So these people are given priority in in the provision of their care and services. These hospitals, health centers, also in a, maybe in, a, in private private centers they can take a nurse and employ them. Also in military campus they can even employ the nurses. Outside of our like rural, like critical care, critical access hospitals, we have the larger hospital systems. And in South Dakota, we really have three like large hospital systems. And so you can work at those when you graduate. And then when you work there, you really work on one floor of the hospital. So like you can go and work um, just like labor and delivery, or you can go and work just like oncology or something like that. So you can be pretty specialized when you graduate onto what floor you're working on. And then outside of hospital systems, nurses work in the schools. Um, a lot of small towns have school nurses. Um, you can work for the state, for the Department of Health as a public health nurse. And they do a lot of um, like disease tracing or finding if like there was an outbreak of like tuberculosis, they're working with those patients directly. And there is no maximum cooperation among the healthcare workers among themselves due to the unevaluation of the nurses. 
a lot of hospitals are offering what um, they call a sign-on bonus. So basically, there's a certain amount of money that um, the hospital is offering for a nurse to come and work for them. I find it kind of interesting how we face like the same struggles with uh, sometimes a lack of resources and poor transportation, especially in like rural areas. But we do now have telehealth and I'm not for sure if they have that. Telehealth uh, is not found in our countries. So uh, are you observing that the telehealth is one among of the things that make uh, provision of place very easy in US and the, our country there is equal provision of health educations it means you are you are you are you are, you are, you are not uh, discriminate uh, the groups of people it, uh, just like you provide the, uh, the uh, healthy educations to all groups of ages another thing is concerning generally we see issues of nursing homes yeah princes of nursing homes in uh, our country or our communities there are, are not uh, such uh, things. Kind of allows us to base our practice um, on certain things that they do and um, like how they prioritize women and elderly. Like that would be awesome if in the United States we um, implemented that into our system. I think it's really important to like um, know how like your teaching and communicating to the other person and how they're able to respond and like we have like different um strategies i guess like we have like primary prevention which is like focused on education and then secondary prevention which is like screenings so just like different ways and strategies that we have to communicate with other people that's really helpful i think in south dakota we are growing to be more like diverse even in our rural areas. So just really being aware and being willing to ask questions when you don't know, um, especially like different traditions where like the man is who speaks um, for the woman. So just like being aware of those scenarios and like respecting that and not like approaching it from like our normal cultural view, I guess. As we talked about, um, you know, Caitlin, talked about time and spending that time with those patients. And then also those other strategies or interventions to make sure that patients understand, which is teach back, written instructions, uh, using interpreters. And then if I could just add one last tip that I have seen through, through my career, that's for all of us to show up. And that's to show up as really positive team members that, that work together to provide the best care possible. So, so I, I think it's also recognizing why we're here, what we have really committed to do. And again, that is to, again, uh, Caitlin, to, to really strive and, and provide the best health care that we can. We hope you enjoyed that video. And, and uh, as we talk about the, the project outcomes here in just a minute, I, I just want to say that I, I think such great learning occurred and our goals were met really well. And um, those, those four questions that I think we all came away with so much insight was the similarities and differences that we shared between uh, Kabosho and uh, South Dakota students the importance of communication, what we can learn from each other, and lastly, what takeaways that the students can bring into their, into their nursing practice. So as we look at our, our project outcomes, uh, the students evaluated this project based on a scale of zero to four. Zero being the learning needs were met not at all, and four very much. So we had uh, five uh, project outcomes. 
uh, that we evaluated. And if, if on this chart, if you look over at the far right, uh, when you're looking at it, the combined groups. And again, looking at, uh, at our scores there, really nothing below a, a three, which is great. So um, our, our five outcomes were to increase to increase the understanding of the role of culture. And I think through that video, you'll you'll see that so much was shared about that. The, sec the second one is uh, really what the students talked about and Helene spoke about as well is um, uh, the healthcare needs of the elderly and how important that is for uh, Tanzania. And uh, so I, I just thought that was a great takeaway. The third one was to increase the understanding of barriers in healthcare. And as you watch the video too, you'll see that some of those barriers are shared. You know, the maybe the, how the communication between healthcare members on, on both ends really can continue to increase. And number four was to increase the understanding of similarities and differences. And I, I loved that piece uh, because again, while we're different, we have some, some common similarities. And then lastly, how we were able to use technology to communicate and collaborate across the world, which was just such a privilege to be a part of. So we're, we're excited about our, our outcomes, and uh, we think that we were really able to meet those nicely. Next slide, Stacey. So uh, the lessons learned, Lisa, I'm not sure if this is mine or yours. Sure, I'd be happy to um, to talk about that. Uh, again, as uh, you saw in the video, I think that really came through listening to the students that nursing students really do have that same common commitment to improving health and really providing great care um, to their patients. And that while we have unique things in each country, Nurses share also a lot of common rewards and, and challenges, which um, we might have to come up with unique solutions, but that is part of nursing. That's part of nursing, no matter where you are, is that you have to um, commit to providing care and be creative and, and also commit to overcoming those barriers when you're faced with them. Uh, I think you also probably saw that students learned about cultural awareness and acceptance and how that's just really fundamental to what we do in our practice. And we also demonstrated through this project that uh, technology can be a tool that we can use to bridge that gap between different countries and different types of nursing, different practices. And while it, it also can have challenges, um, they can be overcome and it can be a very effective way to uh, partner with everybody. So um, those I think were some of the real key takeaways that we learned and we can use going forward and continuing our collaborations. Next slide, Stacy. And then just lastly, um, opportunities going forward. Uh, we've established some great relationships with our colleagues in Tanzania over the last few years. We look forward to hopefully building on those and continuing to partner and learn from each other um, in the future. Uh, we can continue to enhance our, our understanding of the importance of developing these global competencies as our world becomes more global and interconnected the ability to work together with groups and individuals from across the world is more important all the time. Um, that we could, uh, another opportunity would be to look at other healthcare needs um, and challenges that could be the focus of a project. And then also look at ways that we could uh, do more to incorporate our colleagues and other uh, members of the healthcare team into this work. So those were a few of the opportunities that we identified for the future. And then our contact information is on this last slide. So I think at this time, any uh, we all of us would welcome any questions that you might have about the project. Um, 
And again, we really want to thank, thank the MHCH Foundation and GRNEN for this tremendous opportunity. So we'll open it for questions. In the event that um, you hadn't had the opportunity, I wanted to share um, that Corey, who is the executive director of the MHCH Foundation, shared that um, the work is outstanding. And on behalf of the foundation, they're honored and proud to support the opportunity um, for this work. You should be proud of your students and yourselves as educators. Thank you for your dedication and leadership with the grants. So if there are any other questions, please feel free to um, share that in Q&A or chat. Um, of course, we always welcome any future questions that may come up sometimes after we've processed um, it, that helps. So we do have the open forum on our website. And of course, the, you can see the um, individual faculty has offered that as well. And um, we have David who is asking to ask, share our questions. So let me go ahead and allow him to <clears throat> do that. One moment, please. David, you should be able to ask your question now, should you choose? Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Thank you, Corey, and thank you, team, for such a wonderful uh, presentation. I have a few questions, one or two. The first one, how many students participate in this program in both countries? Then the second question, what was the catchment? I remember there was assessment which was being done. What was the, the catchment population which uh, where assessment was being done? And what was the method used to identify that catchment? Then lastly, I missed uh, to get because my my internet went uh, oh, oh, went off. In this study, what was the definition of vulnerable? Okay, thank you. Those three questions. Uh, okay, maybe if uh, I may take this opportunity to go ahead first to ask the first question. Uh, so with the first question, that's uh, the, it's, it wanted to know whether how many students we were having the project. I think if you look on the uh, uh, table that we are having, we have we have 16 students, uh, seven from Kibosho and nine from uh, 10, was it 10? I think if I'm not mistaken. Nine. Nine from uh, you know, uh, South Dakota. So total we are having 16 students. And the second question was about that the catchment area, if, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so, uh, so if I have to speak for uh, Kibosho, I think we went to the uh, uh, rural area and that was uh, Moshi, one of the uh, districts among uh, the six in Kilimanjaro, that's uh, in Tanzania. And uh, basically, uh, the environment that the students they went to assess it's uh, uh, it's actually uh, in the uh, uh, poorest region of this country. So uh, uh, students they had the opportunity like to to uh, to visit different places in these catchment areas. Like they went to the hospital, they uh, they visited the community to do screening and. Uh, uh, ask some questions to get some feedback, and they did some intervention in this uh, area. So basically, it was the hospital, the community, and also uh, the schools. So those were the uh, three main catchment areas that the students they participated in. I believe it's the same, uh, uh, similar to you know, South Dakota. So they went in the same area. Maybe in addition, because in 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 Tanzania we don't have like nursing homes as how you have presented. Uh, the South Dakota students, they went into nursing homes and they did also assessment and uh, survey there. And the last one was, 
maybe I didn't just get it right. Uh, if some my colleagues that just had it correctly, they can go ahead and answer it. I think you did a great job, Gadri, and thank you for uh, answering that. David, does that answer your question? Okay, fine. I can ask another, or, or in a rejoinder, I wanted to understand why they used this number of students, nine, six, why, why they were they choosing few, because in a class there could be so many students. And then I, I didn't, uh, get uh, you said about the area but what was the catchment population where you were doing the uh, the assessment and the last one which you didn't get what was the definition of uh, of vulnerable okay uh uh, with uh, vulnerability, I think uh, if if I have to put in the context in our context, I think we uh, we tried to look on uh, uh, maybe the people who are at risk of uh, uh, of getting some of the uh, ailments or maybe they uh, uh, they are not prioritized in receiving uh, some basic care, maybe primary level of care. So uh, that was the uh, uh, the operational definition that we tried to work on. So when we say, uh, for example, uh, in, in Tanzania, you can find that uh, elderly, they are always marginalized. It's like they, uh, if, they, uh, if they go to the hospital, for example, they are more likely not to receive uh, 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 quality level of care, but also they are, uh, to receive, uh, to access, it can be a little bit harder for them to access uh, uh, healthcare services at the hospital. So even the government decided to put the police, uh, like if you find uh, uh, elders he, he, uh, at the clinic, first they have to be served, uh, and then maybe uh, the rest they have to 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 wait. Uh, the operational definition, uh, it's, it's basically like people who are at risk or people who are marginalized or they are not uh, given a priority in receiving uh, care. And uh, with uh, catchment population, uh, maybe uh, Lisa can answer that. No, I think that you, I think we did... Uh, talk about the different areas where all of our groups did go do um, their assessments of the, of the vulnerable population that were identified. Um, I agree, Agadrian, they were very similar. Um, just uh, a few differences, such as our students here in the United States going to a, a elderly long-term care facility while the Kabosho students went to more of a hospital clinic uh, site, but still very rural. Um, and so as terms of the size of the groups, uh, and um, I'll let Gadrian talk about their number, but our, our South Dakota students, we had um, three clinical groups. So this was, these were three groups that um, went out and did their community health or population health rotation. And um, so uh, that was, we just tried to keep them somewhat small so that we had really a good group and great discussion between the two sites when we were working on technology. And, and Lisa, um, I don't, if, yeah. if I could just add a little bit that may be helpful for people as they uh, move forward with applying for these great grants, um, we were pretty uh thoughtful as far as what level of student. So we have four semesters for our nursing program. And we just needed to, it was really tied to where they were in the program. And what we've kind of learned is that for students to be really successful, this was the last semester students, but they had that, that knowledge, that information, kind of that confidence behind them to really be able to engage well with this project. So, um, just maybe something helpful as we move forward is we were we it was helpful to make sure that we had them in the right part of their program to be able to really engage fully. 
And I can also share and answer the question about the population numbers. So um, CESDAC, which is the Disability Center, is in Vermilion, South Dakota. And um, Vermilion is where our university is located. So the population of the town, city itself is about 10,000 people, but when the university is in session, it doubles, so it's 20,000. Um, but the town itself is a, a, around 10,000 is the population of that community. Um, the nursing home in Wakanda, South Dakota, that community um, has uh, 400 is the population of that rural town. And then why not Nebraska, where it was the school? Um, that population is 370 people. So um, those are the sizes of the communities um, uh, for population wise. Thank you. We um, are getting close to the top of the hour, but we do have one additional question. So I'm gonna unmute. Um, I believe it's um, Keisha. If I pronounced that wrong, I do apologize, but please feel free to ask your question. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Corey. Um, of course, you pronounced it correctly, Kija. Of course, it, it depends on the, the site. In my country, we pronounce Kija. Thank or you. Shige, or Thank you very much, uh, our presenter for today, for a nice work. Uh, so great. I have a few uh, observations. Maybe you can help me in the future. Um, uh, during the introduction, I heard that you you focused this vulnerable group, and during your implementation of your project, you identified other group which are mostly vulnerable. So um, I'm curious to know who are these, and how is the situation between the the two sides? Was it a similar or different? That is one. But two, if you go to the evaluation, I noted out of five questions, I noted a little bit of variations in terms of uh, in increment. Um, for example, question number one and two and three was most uh, favorable to students from Kibosho. They indicated a significant improvement. But for question number four and five, uh, it was not favor for students from Kibosho, but they favor the more students from South Dakota. So what is your insight based on these findings? Thank you. I will, I'll take the last question, part of your question that um, related to the differences that we did see in some of the um, scores um, between the two sites. They were, again, we had small numbers. So, um, you know, just kind of keeping that in mind. Uh, the last question had to do with technology and I do think that there were some differences in the challenges that pertain to technology between the sites and um, at, that, you know, internet Wi-Fi access is a little bit more difficult in Kabosho than it is in the United States. So I think that could explain some of the differences there. Um, and uh, that might also, you know, that, occasional difference in um, the ability to connect and clearly here may have pertained to the other one too. But again, our numbers were quite small there. So I think that might answer your last question. Um, and then I'm, I, I have to have you repeat the first part of that again, I guess. Thank you, thank you for for responding to uh, some of the of the questions, the concern that I have raised. Of course, the first question it was like uh, during your introduction. I don't know what H and I don't know, what, but I heard that um, through this project, you you identify some groups which are most vulnerable. So so my query is to know who are these. 
are they similar also across uh, South Dakota and uh, Tanzania? And this is the issue that uh, I posed so that I can learn who are these. Probably we need also to prioritize some of, some of the interventions. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you. Hello, you want to go ahead? Uh, okay, uh, maybe I just to respond to that. Thank you, Kija, for, uh, yeah, thank you, uh, for raising a very good question. Uh, available uh, uh, groups that we identified, uh, in particular in Tanzania, we identified three uh, available groups. The first one was elderly. When we say elderly, we are talking about the population above 60 years. Uh, and also uh, children, that's uh, below five years of age. But also we identify as pregnant women uh, as the part of uh, the rural population. I think uh, uh, maybe uh, with the exception to uh, children and uh, pregnant women, but uh, uh, South Dakota also they are having um, uh, like uh, a quite number of elderly. So that's one of the similarities that we had between these uh, two uh, countries. Great, thank you so much. Oh, if there are no other questions today, um, I think we've reached the top of our hour. Um, so once again, I would like to thank um, our presenters for sharing this incredible project that you collaborated on with us. Um, we will be sharing those podcasts to the open forum um, following the presentations. Um, and we encourage you to take a listen to that. Um, and please feel free to share this with others. We will be posting the recording of today's session later this week. Um, if you'd like to revisit that or share that with colleagues. Um, once again, if you are interested in participating in the next series of our um, MHCH Foundation's Global Rural Nursing Virtual Collaboration Learning Grant, we will be hosting a pre-application seminar on February 21st. You can find that detail on our website at grnen.org. And we hope to see you again in um, one of our future webinars. So thank you, everyone. Have a wonderful evening. Have a wonderful day. Um, and as always, we appreciate the time that you share with us. Take care. <laughs>